I'm Paul Stevens. I'm the ordained minister in placement at St Luke's Uniting Church in Highton. In recent weeks in these videos, we've been looking at uh, resources that we can use to keep us afloat in these times. And we've explored uh, the gift of prayer and the importance of finding somewhere safe, a safe haven, a sanctuary. This week, we're focusing on the theme of wisdom. Given the maximum number of people who can attend a worship service is 20, it looks like for the foreseeable future we'll be continuing to uh, remain fully online with these services. So just giving a bit of a heads up for what's coming up, next week we'll be exploring the uh, ways in which uh, local initiatives are taking place to care for creation. This is a we're in a, a time of the church's year where we're encouraged to think about creation. So we'll be looking at practical things that are happening around the place to, um, to actually care for creation. And you'd be astounded at the things that are going on. And the following week, the last Sunday in uh, September, which is not too far away from the fe feast of St Francis of Assisi, we'll be uh, looking at the blessing of animals. And we're inviting you to share in this service by sending in photographs of animals that are a blessing to you. So you can do that uh, by contacting us through our email address or on our Facebook page. We have one of those. And of course, you can find out all the contact details by going to our website, which is uh, found at St Luke's United Church Highton. And the website address is St Luke's UCA. .org.au St Luke's UCA.org.au I invite you now to come aside to come into a time of prayer. Let's pray. Loving God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, we praise you for the wonders and mystery of your creation of which we are a part. We praise you for the amazing tapestry of the stars and planets in the clear night sky. We praise you for all the unfolding of life that happens in this season of spring. Fresh green shoots, the joy of the dawn chorus of songbirds, and the vibrant colour and scents of blossom. Enable us to be truly thankful for the blessing of this universe in which we have a home. Help us to discern your presence in the midst of all the things that make up our daily lives. And enable us right now to be open to you, to listen for your word of wisdom for us. Forgive us when we fail to seek your guidance, when we can convince ourselves that our way is always the best way and that we can do it all by ourselves. Open us to the transformation and renewal that your spirit can truly make to us and our lives. May we grasp hold of your forgiveness, your grace and your life poured out in Christ Jesus. Give us the courage and strength to walk Jesus' way, the way of the cross and the empty tomb. And we pray in the name of Jesus, the one who is the way, the truth and the life. Amen. Let's listen now to our two passages of Scripture. The first of these uh, comes from the Old Testament book of Proverbs. Uh, the book of Proverbs, as its name suggests, contains a whole series of pithy sayings. It's not all about pithy sayings, but the majority of it is a whole series of pithy sayings. And the book of Proverbs fits into a kind of a category of Old Testament book called Wisdom Literature. Other books in this category include the book of Job and the book of Ecclesiastes. It seems quite appropriate then as we're reflecting on wisdom that uh, the book of Proverbs comes from wisdom literature. Now the short passage you're about to hear is, uh, is an interesting one. It comes from chapter 1 of the book of Proverbs. And in this passage, wisdom personified is sounding pretty angry because no one is taking her seriously. The second passage that we're going to hear comes from the Gospel of Mark. And this is a passage in which Jesus speaks of the way that he offers, the way of the cross. 
and a way that Peter and the other disciples struggle to see as a way of wisdom. Let's listen to our scripture passages. The scripture readings today are from Proverbs 1, verses 20 to 26, and then verse 33. Wisdom cries out in the street. In the square, she raises her voice. At the busiest corner, she cries out. At the entrance to the city gates, she speaks. How long, O simple ones, would you love being simple? How long will scoffers delight in their scoffing and fools hate knowledge? Give heed to my reproof. I will pour out my thoughts to you. I will make my words known to you. Because I have called and you refused, have stretched out my hand and no one heeded, and because you have ignored all my counsel and would have none of my reproof, I, in turn, will laugh when disaster strikes you. I will mock when calamity overtakes you. But whoever listens to me will live in safety and be at ease without fear or harm. The next reading from the Gospel is Mark chapter 8, verses 27 to 31. Jesus went on with his disciples to the villages of Caesarea Philippi, and on the way he asked his disciples, Who do people say that I am? And they answered him, John the Baptist, and others, Elijah, and still others, one of the prophets. He asked them, But who do you say that I am? Peter answered him, You are the Messiah. And he sternly ordered them not to tell anyone about them. Jesus foretells his death and resurrection. Then he began to teach them that the Son of Man must undergo great suffering and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed, and after three days rise again. He said all this quite openly. Do you remember that 1960s song, Everybody's Talking at Me? It was by a guy by the name of Fred Neal. And look, I hadn't heard of him either until I looked it, looked it up. But it's true, isn't it? Everybody is talking at us, talking at you, talking at me. On TV, radio, Facebook, Twitter, in the newspapers, even me on this video talking to you. If you still read a newspaper, like The Age, you'll know that there are these days pages of so-called op ed columns with people spruiking particular views on all sorts of things and um, it can be confusing it can be overwhelming in the end it can be just simple to to read things and to listen to things that we feel are going to be okay but of course that's fraught with danger too if we don't read things that challenge us wisdom may be calling to us in the marketplace but which voice is wisdom's <clears throat> In his New Testament letter, James warns that unwise or indeed downright intentionally destructive or abusive language can cause much damage. He writes about the tongue being like the rudder of a ship, a small thing that can move something quite large, and compares abusive talk to a small fire that can set the whole forest alight. And don't we see that today? People having their reputations destroyed because of the peddling of what turns out later to be lies. James may have lived 2,000 years ago, but he knew all about fake news. So where do you find wisdom? Where is wisdom in this world? Don't we desire to hear wisdom 
and not ignore it. The Christian response to questions about wisdom and truth is, of course, to turn to Jesus. Not that his way is automatically seen as the wise way. Peter and the other disciples were not too rapt to learn that the way of Jesus, the way of the Son of Man, involves suffering and death. Mark tells us that Mark tells us that after the events recorded in the passage that we just heard read for us by Barbara, Peter took Jesus aside and rebuked him, which led to Jesus responding in a very blunt fashion. Look it up if you can't remember what Jesus said. The Apostle Paul, in his first letter to the Corinthians, writes about the way of Jesus, the way of cross, as indeed being the wisdom of God. But this was a way that for Greeks, and certainly for Romans too, was in reality for them foolishness. How could self-sacrifice, how could death be a way of wisdom? But Jesus' way does involve self-sacrifice rather than self-aggrandisement. It involves servant leadership rather than dictatorship or despotism. It involves respecting the other rather than trying to control the other and their views. This way involves follow the, doing the hard yards of genuinely seeking to love God, love neighbour and love self. By the way, let me be clear that while Jesus' way is about self-giving, it's not about self-denigration. For so many in the world, the way of Jesus is plain weird. For so many, life is all about getting to the top at all costs. Making it is about getting all your wants and desires met. But the wisdom of God cries out that this is false. That it is in losing our lives that we find them. That abundant life is found when we follow the way of Jesus, the way of the cross. Harry Emerson Fosdick was a famous 20th century American preacher. He served, amongst other places, at the Riverside Church in New York. He wrote an excellent hymn, which we still sing today, for the opening of that grand church, entitled God of Grace and God of Glory. Each verse ends with a kind of similar refrain. The second verse ends with the words, Grant us wisdom, grant us courage for the living of these days, seeking God's leading to walk in the way of Jesus. And as we look to the way of Jesus, as the way of wisdom, calling out to us in the midst of the world, my prayer is, loving God, grant us wisdom, grant us courage for the living of these days. Now for our prayers of intercession. Let us pray. Gracious God, Help us to follow in the ways of Jesus, to walk his way of wisdom. Empower us to be ambassadors of the path of abundant life that he offers. We pray for our world that is broken and in pain. For those who are in sorrow and need. For the hungry, the poor and lonely. For the sick and the bereaved. Be their rock and constant companion through difficult and dark days. We pray for all who are struggling to find truth and wisdom in the world. We hold before you those known to us with deep and often unnamed needs. The anxious, the lonely, the unloved, the sick, the dying, and the grieving. We also remember before you those who are genuinely putting themselves at risk for the sake of others, medical staff, emergency service personnel, teachers, children's workers, carers, public transport drivers. Draw near to all in need and grant the peace of your presence. 
the healing of your touch and your guidance and the assurance of love so that all who are weak and weary may walk in hope and faith. In the name of Christ, Amen. Hayr mer vor herginesis sur pieriti anunko yegesti arkaitiunko yegitin gamko vor bes herginis yev hergri zhats mer hana bazort dur mezaisor tog mes zbardis mer vor bes yev mek togunk merots bardavanats yev midan yeriznes i portsutyun ay pergia i charen Zikoye arkayutyun yev zorutyun yev park havidyanas amen Go forth into the world in peace be of good courage hold fast that which is good render to no one evil for evil strengthen the faint hearted support the weak help the afflicted honor all people love and serve the lord rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. And the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace.